first off, great to have you here. Um, tell me just what it's like doing these types of things in, in your current role. I know you said you're a community liaison. Yeah. Don't quite know what that means. No, I don't know what it means. What, but what's it like getting out here and well, interacting? No, I, I love to interact with baseball fans, period. I mean, obviously, I do a lot of it in Pittsburgh, and you know, I have the opportunity today to talk to the Marauders fans. And you know, these are people, I, I, especially when you're talking about season ticket holders, these are people who love the game of baseball, which is just perfect for me. I, I can spend hours and hours and days talking to people about the game of baseball, and particularly in this situation. I've been coming here since 1970, so it was like one year after the Pirates arrived. Got a great relationship built with the city and a lot of people in the city. So there's some friends that I know in there, and a lot of other people that I know are just good Pirate baseball fans down here in Bradenton that uh, follow the Marauders. and. It's fun to talk to them and uh, just talk about what this whole thing is all about. I know you talked about your journey through the minor leagues and, and your time at McKechnie Field. Uh, do you have any memories that kind of stick out of when you first got to McKechnie or, or things that happened at McKechnie that, that still stick with you? Well, I, what, what sticks with me the most is obviously when I first came in 1970, I'm a minor league player, so we're playing all our games over here at Pirate City. And then finally in 1972, I was brought to Major League Spring Training, not because I was going to make the team. I wasn't ready to be in the big leagues yet, but they need extra bodies to throw batting practice and stuff, and I was one of them. And the first time you walk into McKechnie Field, because McKechnie Field represented Major League players. That was Roberto Clemente. That was Willie Stargell. That was all these other guys, Steve Blass, all the guys that I was now playing with instead of just the minor league. So, you know, that first day of walking into McKechnie Field, even though I knew I wasn't a major league player, it was the first time I was in a setting of a major league club. And that, that was, it was a special memory and something I'll never forget. Didn't pitch, sat in the bullpen the whole day, but, uh, you know, I was still, I was a big leaguer. You, you talked, too, about your minor league experience, and, and you pointed out to the season ticket holders when you played in double A, which is now in Altoona, which is a luxury considering, oh, yeah, considering, <laughs> considering you were in Canada. Yeah. Uh, what about your high A experience? What was this level like for you? This level was, you know, this was where you kind of sorted yourself out. You found out, okay, I, I, I was older, obviously, and signed out of college, so I had played one year in short season A ball, and they, they kind of figured out, okay, this guy's got enough tools that he's going to have at least a chance to play in the major leagues. So your high A experience is your first time where you're, you're in a group of everybody who's been deemed that they have a chance to play in the major league. So it's different. You're not getting all these, you're not getting to play against guys that don't have the physical ability to be there. You and everybody else that's there do have the ability. So the competition level steps up considerably. The confidence level steps up considerably because everybody knows and believes now that they are good enough to be there. So now it's, you know, more one-on-one, -on -one, more man, you know, man-to-man, -man. I know I'm good. I know you're good. Let's battle it out and see who can win this. You know, who can win this individual battle, one of many during the course of a game. So, yeah, it's the first time where you get a different level and a different kind of competition. People talk too about the business of minor league baseball now. It's very much a business, and you have the people like the season ticket holders and the, the environment and everything that kind of goes along around it. And if you go to Salem now, they've got Salem Memorial Baseball Stadium. Right. Well, we didn't bars. play in the big one. Yeah, we I played mean, in the small one. What was it like back then? What's the environment like back then? As as a kid coming up through the minors, you didn't have all that kind of hubbub around you, did you? Well, no, we didn't. But you know what? When when you're a player coming through the minor leagues, and I'm sure that even the players who play with the Marauders, yes, they're excited about the fact, you know, they have the fans and, you know, you have a bigger ballpark and stuff like that. But you're really focused in on the game itself and your performance, and uh, that's, that's first. Now, when I was coming through these stages of the minor leagues, we were playing in all older ballparks, ballparks that were built in the 30s and 40s and hadn't been touched since then. Um, you know, minor league baseball has changed immensely since I was there. It's now a very much of a, a polished product, and uh, I'm sure it's a different feeling for the players to play now, only because there is more promotion. People know them a little better. You know, we, there were times when we were in towns playing, particularly on the road, where nobody had a clue who we were. We were just guys running around in uniform. So it's a different environment today, but I think it also, because it is a different and better environment, prepares the players better to play at the major league level because 
it's not the first time that this has happened to them where you know they've been doing interviews after the game they've, they've talked to fans they've signed the autographs this is something different that we didn't do because that interest wasn't there last thing and we'll let you go on this note uh the book i'm reading right now is a view from the booth by uh the phillies broadcaster chris wheeler and he actually mentions in one of the first chapters that one of the players he hated seeing against the phillies was kent to um i wanted to ask you where where this came from when, when did you start throwing Actually, I, I, that work for you? I, uh, I threw sidearm my entire career, high school, college, okay. all the way through the minor leagues up until I got to double A ball in Sherbrooke, Canada, 90 miles east of Montreal in the, the frozen tundra. And um, one day I just dropped down there and I went, whoa, wait a minute, that works pretty good. And, it, and it's funny that, that Chris Wheeler is, is writing about it in the book because when I, when I did broadcasting in Philadelphia, Chris Wheeler was my broadcast partner. So we, we worked together in Philadelphia. But yeah, it was a... Uh, it was a delivery that I developed over time, and, and you know, basically, why I got there and stayed there was it worked. It, that's that's the simple, simple solution to a lot of questions in baseball. We try to make everything real complicated. A lot of times, it's you know, just very simple. Does it work? If it does, stay with it. It worked. Uh, Kent, to call me. Appreciate the time. Appreciate you coming up. All right. Thank you.